Yes, it's okay. Uh, come here. Let's get over here so we can people can see you at home. Come here. Come here. Yes, good boy. Who's a good boy? Can you sit? No, I want you over here. Come here. Come on. Come on. There you go. Come here. Come here. Yes, I know you're a little bit nervous. That's why we're taking our time. It's okay. I think you'd do better if you'd gotten him on the other side. On the side? Okay. Because it's not close to those stairs. Oh, he doesn't like the stairs. That's right. He won't go down the Murphy, stairs. come here, buddy. Come here. There you go. Come back around this way. Sit. Down. Okay, make sure I don't look fat. <laughs> <laughs> Are we rolling? Uh -huh. Okay. So in the last video, uh, you saw Murphy and I were outside, uh, away from the Guardians, and he was loving on me, giving me some hugs and kisses. Um, as we came back in, I did it in a very structured way. We stopped as we got progressively closer and closer to the house. I wanted to see how he would do. Um, and we were fine until, we got, until I sat down at the table with the Guardians. Then he had a little bit of a regression, and he kind of did a, a lunge and a nip. Now this is why we haven't removed the muzzle. I feel pretty good about him right now. But closer to you guys, the more and which leads me to think that this is a possessive sort of thing. So I wanted to do this so we kind of uh, talk about some of the signs to watch out for when we have a dog that might be reactive. So um, one of the things that I've noticed is Murphy has a tendency to freeze for a fraction of a second and then he, he erupts. So if you see the freeze, uh, that would be number one. Now, because the way you guys have his haircut is going to be a little bit hard, but a lot of dogs will stare with a lowered head first. That's usually the first sign. So for him, it might be a freeze, or he might be given that. I just might not have recognized that so far. Um, but as you can tell, once we, I'm about 10 or 12 feet away from the Guardians, and we're fine. We don't have any problems. Well, there are a little bit of tension right there. Mm -hmm. So you can see he kind of froze up a little bit. So when that happens, we want to kind of pause. If, you're, if somebody's interacting with him, give him a second to process it. Um, I, again, being a possessive thing with you guys, it's going to be... Uh, important for you guys to watch out for these things and the muzzle is something that we're probably going to need to incorporate practice of having house guests come over with him in the muzzle so we can show him a better way of re reacting making sure he can't react with his teeth and eventually he'll get to the point where he stops reacting because he realizes that's not really an option we, and we've shaped and helped him develop new behaviors. So um, freezing <coughs> is, uh, is a big one, staring is also another one. Uh, also, they can breathe heavy. Now, right now, he's breathing heavy probably because of the workout that he got from, from when we first got there. He's overstimulated, and then it was a little bit warm when we went out for a walk. Um, their pupils will typically dilate. A lot of times, they will lower their head. The tail will go up. The hackles, which is hard to see on soft coatings, uh, coatings uh, but a lot of dogs you'll see along the spine, especially between the shoulder blades around, the rear, uh, around their uh, hips. Um, and then um, licking the lips is also a sign of, of, of uh, yeah, anxiety. So uh, if he's anxious, that's not going to be a good time to practice these sort of things initially. Just like learning to drive. We learn to drive in a parking lot somewhere. So that if we make a mistake, nothing happens. And we keep on practicing in that environment until we get proficient and we feel confident enough to take it to a street with no cars and no traffic. Practice there. Then we do it a car, a street with cars and so on and so forth. So for him, it's probably going to be a progression. But uh, since he's reacted to you guys, yes, yeah, good boy. Um, but he's using his nose still. Anytime he's using his nose, that's what we're looking for. That's how dogs should meet. If they're meeting by eyesight, which is what he met when I first came in. That's a true. Uh, that's going to be a problem. You letting him sit upstairs out the, and look out the window that you described on the staircase is okay. But once he starts uh, uh, barking, reacting, you need to address that. And so I'm going to go through some steps uh, with you guys off camera so that you guys can have uh, some tools that you can use to uh, better control him and redirect him. Um, and I'm also going to go through an exercise to help you uh, help him develop a little bit more focus um, with you guys, and a little, which should uh, <coughs> which should result in a little bit more control for him as well. Um, but those are the things we want to watch out for. So uh, any of those individual things by themselves, I'm going to keep my eye on the dog. When I start seeing a combination, that's when I'm going to get ready to interact uh, or to uh, interrupt it. Uh, now, there's nothing wrong with having tools involved. Now, I don't like using choke chains or prong collars or shot collars, especially for this sort of situation because it'll make it worse. Uh, so we're just using what the tools that the Guardians have, the harness and one of my leashes. Now, we, I uh, mentioned uh, in the introductory video, we introduced a muzzle over the course of three or four days. And as you can see, I mean, he's comfortable wearing the muzzle. He's not pawing at it, trying to get it away. So these are all tools that we can you know, use to help put the dog in position to succeed. Uh, but if you see a combination of those body language, a lot of licking lips, a lot of staring, breathing fast, holding their breath, statue, 
uh, those sort of things. That's what we want to make sure that we're either going to grab him, uh, and we don't want to hold him on the leash with it tense. That's kind of one of the things we were talking about in, in, in the initial video. Now this is, uh, it's not dominance theory, but I prefer to focus on the positive as opposed to the negative and correcting on one of behaviors. Um, snapping the leash and jerking the leash can be in that category, but when you have a dog that's in a red zone case, you have to do kind of what you have to do um, if you're on, uh, not ready for it. Now, the key to success is to practice it in situations where he's not surprised and he doesn't get into that red zone state that he was in earlier. And that's going to be a gradual process and we're going to go through some stages of how to do that off camera as well. But uh, this is just a quick little, well probably not quick, but a little synopsis of some of the things to look out for if you have dogs reactive and warning signs to watch for. You want me to shut her down? Perfect.